camping in farmers' fields and pastures is actually like, the best. <laughs> It always feels like there's something to look at when you camp in pastures. We're going to have to drive all the way up there mm -hmm. to find out. If driving the longest road in the world wasn't enough, give yourself 100 days to build a 4x4 motorhome capable of such a task. 40,000 miles crossing every type of terrain imaginable through some of the most feared and remote regions on Earth. Just for something to do? No. For something to write books about. Something to relish in the aliveness of living on the edge of the unknown insanity. Something to radically expand our perspective of what the world is actually like and what is possible within one lifetime. I'm Matthew. And I'm Stacy. And this is Toyota World Runners. Proudly presented by West Can Overland. Off-road and design. That was awesome. I could have stayed there a week. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some places just really, or they make it really hard to leave. <laughs> you just kind of feel homey. Yeah. Driving the Pan American Highway actually involves rarely being on the Pan American Highway and intentionally going out of your way to see unique, different, and exciting things. Sometimes in the middle of beautiful cities, as the tallest cathedral in Colombia. Uh, they're getting the water working for this small boy. I'm in neutral. Oh, okay. Now I'm in gear. Okay. And we're off. Whee! It's customary to rev your engine and honk your horn in a tunnel. Always. Quickly overstimulated by the bustling streets of Manizales during a holiday, we're heading back across the Colombian Central Andean Mountains. <laughs> Man, so we were... We were going away to get to the waterfall, and then we ran on the website, it's like, can't go that way. Do not let Google Maps direct you. It will not work. It has not, it hasn't not been, oh my God, I can't even talk, let alone drive. It's not easy, man. It's not we have easy. a destination pinned on our maps, yet campsites or public land are all but non-existent here. That's going to make things interesting as the sun sets. For now, we've got beautiful scenery around us. Up and down, up and down. We enjoy a certain altitude, but never get too comfortable, as we know it will change. The roller coaster ride over the Andes has confused the outermost layer of our skin. The goosebumps at high mountain roots don't have time to tuck themselves back in before beads of sweat race the surface. One moment you're admiring peaks through the closed windows, the next you're trying to figure out if the noise outside is a jungle bug or the truck. Colombia's landscape changes faster than you can put a sweater on. Look at all the flowers.
Root of the Condor. Maybe we'll even see one. Where are we going? Oh, oh, Cascada Molinos. You can see it near the top left. Top left. There it is. Cascada Molinos. That's where we're going. Stumbling upon amazing places by accident is very rewarding, but so is the scavenger hunt of seeing a photo on Instagram and finding it in real life. I think by the landscape, we've found what we're looking for. So this is a classic case of the campsite that we wanted didn't work out. So now we are asking a hostel. If we can, can we camp on your lawn? <laughs> Hopefully they say yes. Hopefully they say yes. Hopefully they like us. And here comes the shepherd with the sheepies and the goats. Hola. Hola. Hola, buenas tardes. ¿Cómo están? Muy bien, bien, ¿y tú? Bien, bien. Excelente. Cuéntame, ¿en qué puedo ayudarlos? Guiarlos. Uh, lo siento, no entiendes. Eh, Estoy aprendiendo español. Eh, don't worry. Eh, sí. Sí, do you know, is there any other place that we can camp around? I think in? there... Is, uh, we, no. we don't need it. The problem it. is, uh, have all the things to eat. And... Oh, yeah. Sí. Okay. Yeah, we have worry. everything. And come, come, come. Thank you very much. <laughs> Is this? I have a dog. Who is this? Yeah. Definitely staying the night now. We're taking his dog. We have a hostage. Hello. Hello. Flooper. <laughs> well, this is amazing. Yeah. And uh, this is why it always pays to ask. Yeah. And it also shows how friendly. Get your milk. Good morning. You're so cute. Me? So are you. You're so little. I'm gonna ride you. What'd you think of this camp? <laughs> this camp was amazing. And Drama <laughs> dramatic pause. <laughs> this camp was so amazing. The host is on holidays right now, and he apologized and stuff like that that there wouldn't be anybody here. But we we're like, we just need a place to park. And he shows us to this amazing field. There's like really nice bathrooms and showers. There's horses to pet. It's like super peaceful. And now we get to go see the waterfall on that property. I'm just so happy that it's chilly. Not cold, <laughs> just chilly. The host also has this rad Series 2 Defender. Are they called Defenders or just a Series 1 or 2? <laughs> I don't know. Let us know. It's cool. Hummers. All right, is that a fox? Or a coyote. It's Zorro. It's, it's definitely Zorro. And there are horses in our tracks. 
Okay, bye. That would be really cool to see an ocelot. Yeah. Okay. This waterfall looks epic, but we all know why Stacy's really here. A deer. A present waterfall. We both got soaked yeah. going up to the front of it. It's awesome. We didn't bring the camera close because this is a money maker, but it's so sweet. Super rad. Worth the effort, 100%. Yeah. If you're enjoying this film, please smash that like button and consider subscribing if you're not already. It's free and it really does help us out. Stacy's forcing me to do this. <laughs> hey, Cam. What's the first thing that comes to mind when you think of Colombia? No, not that. The other one. That's where we're going. So this morning we woke up and we're actually just like camped in the middle of a field in a farm. So we had those horses were, you know, rushing by the Chinook nice and early, which was a hilarious and awesome sound. But it's really peaceful here. There's a high chance it might be Columbus Day. Day of the races, today. So things might be closed. We're unsure, but we're gonna try and do a coffee tour today. Yes, because we are in the coffee axis. Mm -hmm. It's the axis of the world. The entire world runs on this region of coffee. Good day, everyone. Day. Hello. What's your name? Are you pony number one? Oh, look at you. This guy's very curious. Uh, Underappreciated skill for overlanding is sewing. Stacy lost a button. <laughs> I'm gonna have to put that back on. Folks, new button. Good as new. Even better than the first time. Yeah. Yeah. Look at that. I can go on a coffee tour now. Yep. Trinitaria or Bugambilia. The Bugambilia is used here uh, to relieve the fever and to relieve uh, the cough. We're in the region called Eje Cafetero, also known as the Coffee Axis. This region produces the majority of Colombian coffee. The farm we're at uses the traditional method of growing, which combines many different medicinal plants, fruit trees, and vegetables, along with the coffee. This creates a natural ecosystem of defense for the coffee, as opposed to commercial monoculture plantations, which have to use pesticides and fertilizers. 
These old machines are used to strip the shell of the beans, and the second one separates the high-quality coffee for export from the beans they sell to the supermarket. The coffee that maybe has been eaten by Broca flow, and the most high-quality get more deeper. Because all the properties that has the coffee, the almond reach when it has been eaten. That was straight salt. <laughs> okay, do you want to go see the biggest palm trees in the world? Big in what? Ta are they the Ta tallest? Ah, okay. I would like to go there. <laughs> All right, we are beginning our route, and clearly, this isn't where all the vehicles go. <laughs> For us, a cup of coffee in the morning can be the difference of a good day and a great day. We've got to thank Colombia for their awesome joy juice. Cruiser. Fruit roulette continues. <laughs> and tonight we're making a dessert recommended by a local from Salento. An old man told us that this fruit, chocolate, we don't have regular milk, but milk will make a really good dessert. So we're going to try it out because always listen to what strangers say. This is the fruit. We, uh, <laughs> we forgot the name of it already. <laughs> but we tried one. Well, I asked him, we were at the tienda, and I was like, que es esto? And he was like, oh, it's this. And then he cut one open for us. And it's not what you would expect at all. It's like this, like, I don't even know what how you would describe that, but it's got this like kind of like gelatin. It's got these seeds. And they're like sour and sweet at the same time. Mm -hmm. One of you guys is going to know what this fruit's called and you'll tell us what we'll it's We'll put like. it on the screen. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, he said mix it with chocolate and milk. He's like mash it up and mix it with chocolate and milk. Like, he said it in Spanish, so we're hoping this is what he meant. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, worms and dirt vibes here. <laughs> chocolate fruit soup? Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think we're just gonna we're just gonna go for it. Yeah, grab the spoon. I don't know why I wanted to, I wanted to use the fork. Okay, I mean it's chocolate. How bad could it be? It's pretty good. Really? It just tastes like fruity chocolate. <laughs> Shocking. <laughs> It's a long drive to find the anomaly of nature that only grows in this region. So we tucked ourselves into the pine trees right off the road last night. Finding designated camp spots here is about as elusive as seeing the Colombian bear. First, we're going to call it geocache. If you send us a picture of our sticker on this sign, we will send you something. I don't know what yet, but something.
these Colombian mountain routes are equally exhausting as they are interesting and entertaining. It may take us all day to travel 50 or 100 kilometers, but the views are amazing. As long as we don't have to turn around for some reason. Deer on the sign, so we must be getting close to the palm trees, right? Yes, deer and palms. The deer palm. Look at the puppy. Ever seen a German Shepherd as a farm dog? But look at the puppy. Yes, he's a nice. Puppy. Oh my gosh. That is a sweet tree. Now I love that color. This area is called Tochecito, or Finca La Carbonara, and these are the tallest wax palms in the world. This area concentrates 80% of the world's wax palms and is estimated at 600,000 trees. They're threatened by cattle ranching in the area, as the seeds fall to the ground and are mistaken for grass. It's striking to see palm trees of this size up here at 3,000 meters in elevation. Such a unique natural area. So cool. It just keeps going. That horse. It's really cool seeing you go up this way. I like the yellow. The mustard. Okay, so this is wild. So there's a guy in this Jeep who stopped us and said that there's construction or they're laying cement. They're laying cement. <laughs> Matthew's talking to them right now. Um, and they said the cement needs about, or like the concrete needs about eight days to set. And then the guy gets on the phone with someone and is like, okay, for Ochenta Mill. So like 80,000, <laughs> like first it was a no, but now it's a maybe if you pay me. <sighs> so we were offering 50 and hopefully this works cause we don't want to drive all the way back up that dirt road. Let in, let in, see? Yeah, keep coming this way. Yeah, straighten out. You're okay. This is the problem. I think they didn't want to let us pass. So this is fresh concrete. But with a little bit of pesos, a little bit of monetary convincing, they're gonna let us go. 
this rebar right here. So. Slow! Bien. Gracias. He wasn't going to let us pass. We just drove, I don't know, four or five hours, 100 kilometers or so. And uh, he was like, no, you can't pass. The concrete needs eight days to dry. <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, I, I think it's good. How about I just give you a bit of money? He's like, oh, okay, sure. Now the concrete's dry. Thank you. We found a farm on Ioverlander that looked promising as a camp for the night. It would put us in good proximity for the crazy idea we had for the morning. The location, however, was a bit arbitrary and we had to guess which gate to go through. Thankfully, we didn't end up trespassing. private thermal tub. We'll have to talk a little loud because there's a river. Well, yeah. What better place to review Club Columbia Negro. Negro. Oh, there is no bottle. Oh, <laughs> this is the bottle. <laughs> See? Okay, perfect. All right. Mucho better. All right. Smell? Uh, it smells? It smells malty. It smells like a dark lager. Oh, I kind of smell a sulfur. Yeah, I know. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here. Oh, that's good. That's good. Oh, the center we're working with. Dang, after like a million cervezas for months, it's so nice to have a dark beer. Oh, you. It says right on it Cerveza Tipio Dark Lager. Well done. She's a detective. I'm a detective of Club Columbia while in thermal hot spring. Club Columbia. It seriously smells Negra. so much like sulfur. That we're, this is how we turn into the hole. We'll be in here for another 30 seconds. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yum. Good morning. camp we got to soak in thermal hot pools that that was cool and yeah it's very peaceful here they have uh, Tejo which is a Colombian game we've been hoping to play but there's no one here to teach us so hopefully we can play that soon our next camp on our list is might be a bit tricky to get to but Fingers crossed, it's gonna be pretty badass. I, uh, I had never camped on a paddock before this trip and now it seems to happen more frequently than not. 
Buenos días. Oh, hi, guys. Good morning. We're hoping to camp at the top of Cerro Machin. The last time we drove into the crater of a volcano, we got stuck for hours in its clay. This time we would face a different terrain hurdle. Okay, so there's two different ways to go. One goes to a thermal vent, and apparently one goes to the summit, but we can't tell which is which. I think we found the right road to the summits, but clearly it does not get much vehicle traffic. This is still pretty easy terrain for our Chinook. We did however put it in four wheel drive because the risk factor of when it's your house is always a little heightened. The next obstacle was about to give us flashbacks to El Salvador. This is the equivalent of the Honda Civic in the middle of the Baja Desert. Yeah, that's stretched. Jeep, I don't know what, on street tires. Mud pits for breakfast. more intense the uh, rock crawling erosion part or the mud pits See, always camping in pastures man always camping in pastures <laughs> how's that car wash Sunday All right, let's see how much of our house got thrown around. Oh wow, not too bad. The uh, oven mitts fell down and our drawer opened up a bit, so. Wow, all the drawers are still somewhat shut. That is amazing. <laughs> Cocktail hours from four to six. <laughs> this is a really pretty spot. Wow. Look at the palms on the top. 
top of the hill is so cool. What other volcano has palms? Yeah. Our friends, Troopy Vagabonds, who you'll meet soon, told us that uh, this is actually a very dangerous volcano. But they waited to tell us that when we got until we got up here. <laughs> it's fine. So hopefully this isn't our last video. This Eeyore. He's so cute. The endless pursuit. Cerro Machin is a stratovolcano that's part of a larger system of volcanoes in this region. Since 2010, its seismic activity has steadily increased and is closely monitored. In decades prior, it's been responsible for several evacuations. Now, it hosts a small laguna and a farm. I can't imagine living inside a volcano plug, but camping in it is certainly memorable. There's always an amazing adventure in Colombia. I hope by now we've earned your subscription. And as always, thank you for being here. We'll see you next time.